Hey friend, welcome back to our series on tightness. This is the third part, so if you haven't watched one and two, I recommend doing that first. This video here is all about where does our tension come from and why does it matter? Well, to begin, think about the things that make you tense up. Imagine that you're in the wild alone and you're enjoying a fresh caught fish for dinner around the fire. While enjoying your dinner, you hear crackling and rustling leaves behind you. What's your body's response? Imagine you're back in grade school. You decide to sing to the class for a project. The response is laughter and hateful words. What is your body's response? Imagine you're your younger self living in a broken home. The drunken caretaker comes home, swinging the door open. What's your body's response? In these situations, it's pretty clear how your body might respond, either by being ready to fight or by contracting and tightening in and freezing. Either way, the response is gonna be tension. The tension from bigger events like these lives in your body. That is, until you release it. But if you never release it, then it stays in your body. It can even become a pattern that you engage in unknowingly. The next time you encounter fear or emotion, you might raise your shoulders in the same exact way. But the thing is, is that it's not always just the big things. It can be the smallest of things. You feel fear on a daily basis but it's not always the bear behind you or the drunken caretaker. It could be the text on your phone, the task that's been sitting on your schedule for a week, or the worrying of what other people think about you. That's why if you've never had big traumatic events, you can still have tension and you can have a lot of it. To take one of these examples further, let's say you're having a conflict with someone in your social life. You see a text on your phone from that person and your shoulders raise up your thighs squeeze together, and you engage in this pattern of tension. Now imagine how much this happens for you. Some people are doing it all day long. You cannot separate your emotional response from your body. It's all in conjunction. It's all one thing. The nervous system is how your body and your brain communicate. We often think of this as communication through movement. The brain communicates with the muscles to perform action. The skin and the muscles communicate with the brain to get a sense of the environment. Emotional responses are a form of that same communication and they're communicated through movement. Think of the thousands of facial expressions that we can make without even thinking about it. Or think about how your posture is a signifier of how you feel. So emotional responses are expressed in movement of the body and usually through tension. The more that you repeat these patterns that come from emotional responses, the tension, the more solidified that it will become in your body. Again, this is how tension is something that's learned because it's something that you repeat. Now's a good time to say that Everyone has feelings and emotion. You're a human. Emotions are how you navigate the world. They're how we know danger is present, how we love, how we fight, how we protect, and how we laugh and connect. If you have a tight body and your response to this is, that's not me, I don't deal with that, I invite you to think again. You do deal with it. We all deal with it. Here's a quick little exercise to imagine tension. Close your eyes down and picture your body floating out in front of you. Imagine your body as a clear vessel of white light. Peer into the insides and imagine these big clear pathways that tunnel connecting the whole body from your head to your heart, out your shoulders, arms and fingers, down to your hips, your thighs, all the way down to your feet. See these pathways and see the spaciousness inside of them, the clarity. Notice how it's easy for everything to move within these big pathways. Energy, blood, muscles, all can flow. Now, picture that same body and the same pathways, this time with gunk forming on the edges. Chunks of red and purple, gray and black all throughout. Some big taking up most of the space, some small and microscopic. The pathways are constricted and closing in. It's much harder for things to move through these pathways. Think of your red and white blood cells or your lymph 
trying to move through them. Think of your energy trying to move through them. Think of muscles trying to lengthen and contract through them. That gunk that's in the way is tension. You see, tension is much more than just muscles tightening. You are tightening. Your whole being is tightening. You are closing. And the interesting thing is that the closing of your muscles and the closing of your spirit, your mind, or your emotions, whatever you want to call it, it's all one thing. You cannot separate parts of your being. Open your body, open your mind. Open your mind, open your body. So work on both. Work on opening your body with stretching and strengthening techniques. Work on opening your mind and your emotions with lying relaxations, with yoga, or with emotional work. Remember the distinction between stiffness and tension? Well, if you release your tension, then it's gonna be a lot easier to release your stiffness. When the tension releases, your muscles release and your body is more receptive. You can yank and tug and pull on muscles all you want through stretching, but pulling through tension is very difficult. Release the tension and you'll find stretching a lot more useful. The gunk in your body takes up a lot of space. Imagine what it might feel like when you get rid of the gunk. In our next video, we're gonna get a little bit into how you might go about undoing the tightness that you've learned.